Hello, if you clicked on this video, I'm sure you're a reality TV glutton. Maybe connoisseur. Connoisseur is a better word. It's more positive connotation. Like me, and let me tell you, it's so good to be with people on the same wavelength. And without further ado, let's just jump right into this video. Now, if I look down, it's because I have my laptop here. Oh, oopsies, <laughs> didn't mean to play footsies with my tripod there. But anyway, we should go over the categories first. And there is five of them. Seriously uncool, which is seriously uncool. Uncool, lukewarm, cool, and then sub-zero. Yes. First show is Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Seriously uncool. Two words, victim Olympics. Next, Top Gear. Sub zero. I don't even know what to say about this show. I love it so much. So I think I will put in a couple of my favorite clips now. Because this is a hard job, and I'm not just saying this to win favor with lorry drivers. It's a hard job. Change gear, change gear, change gear. Check your mirrors. Murder a prostitute. Change gear, change gear, murder. Check your. That's a lot of effort. Even broken down. Hello. When we stop at the next bit, I'll, I'll write down some simple speed and distance little formula for you so you can work out average speeds as well. There's only two that you really need to know. How fast we've been going, how fast we need to go, or how long we've taken so far. That's where you can use the two stopwatches. So you can say, for 10 minutes we've been doing 80. Mountains. The Grand Tour, yes. This is Sub-Zero. And if you don't know the origins of the Grand Tour, they came about when, in 2015, Jeremy Clarkson, my favorite personality on Top Gear, pummeled a producer after a cold day of filming when he complained that there was no hot food on set. And so then he was subsequently fired. Little did I know, BBC is stupid AF and all of the fans just sort of gravitated towards the Grand Tour instead of Top Gear because Top Gear, they say it's a show about cars, but it's really not. It's just a show about three blokes having a piss, you know? <laughs> and it's, it's hilarious. It's like part Monty Python humor, part petrol head educational aspects but it's mostly just about the humor and that's why it's so fantastic next show are you smarter than a fifth grader <gasps> just why uncool it's uncool people already think americans are stupid we don't need physical evidence of the fact this might be a stupid question i'm guessing it's probably okay. going to be like I thought Europe was a country. Kel. Yes. Focus. I am. Like, I'm listening to what you're saying, but I only hear what I want to. That's just called being a woman. Uh. Next, The Glee Project. Does anyone remember this show? Cool. It's cool. And my favorite moment was when Damon... Oh, he was cute. I thought he was so cute back in the day <laughs> when he was singing uh, the Save Yourself song, uh, Jesse's Girl. You know I wish I was Jesse's girl. Except he sang it wrong. <laughs> I wish I was Jesse's girl. Oh. Comedian, comedian. Songland, cool. It's cool. I really like this show because it doesn't focus on the drama. It is, you know, a competition, I suppose, but it's centering around pure talent. Like the judges, all super talented. I love them. The contestants, talented as fuck. And that song Greenlight by Abel Hart from season one. Ooh, it was my jam when I was biking to class in college. That was a jam I definitely bopped to. Oh, also in season two, um, what was that song, Wrong Places? Gold, her voice, amazing. Love that song. Hell's Kitchen. Despite its name, I would put this in the category of lukewarm. 
when I was a kid, I really wanted to be a chef. And so I would watch a lot of cooking shows and Gordon Ramsay was one of my heroes. But it's in the category of lukewarm because it's a shtick, you know? Gordon yells, swears, and throws tantrums, but it gets old and it doesn't evolve. And that's why it's in the category of lukewarm. Master Chef, I used to watch this as a kid as well. Lukewarm, it doesn't have the oomph, you know? Where is that oomph? And also Graham, 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 Graham. Graham, you need to stop saying sex on a plate. Stop saying that. It's not a compliment. This is food we're talking about. It's disgusting. Shark Tank. I hate this show. This is seriously uncool. I hate the way Kevin sits. You don't look menacing. You look like a giant thumb. I hate the stupid theme song and I hate this show because it seems to perpetuate the idea that you need big venture capital or some billionaire investor backing your company in order to be successful. Next, Bling Empire. Cool. Ooh, it's the crazy rich Asians of real life. And this show, this show, this show makes the Real Housewives look like peasants. Wow. Next, 90 Day Fiance. Before the 90 Days. Very important, before the 90 Days. That show is cool. And it is cool because of two people. Darcy and Ed. Ed, Ed is his name. Darcy because of that scene when she was in the airport. Smell like an angel. Girl, you don't need that much perfume, girl. No, <laughs> the Louis Vuitton. Oh my gosh, I'm just remembering the Louis Vuitton in the escalator. And Ed, what can I say about Ed? Thank you, Nick. 90 Day Fiance, on the other hand, is lukewarm. I, it's just lukewarm, you know? It doesn't, it doesn't have those iconic characters as 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days, for me anyway. Next show, The Last Alaskans. I would put this in a lukewarm category. It's it's just it's like not a bad category to be in, you know. It's just meh. Like I'd watch it if there was nothing else to watch, but it's nothing special. But it's not bad. It's not good. It's not bad. It just is. Next we have Life Below is Life Below Zero. I like this show. I do. Um, it's good to watch an episode here or there, and it's it's nice to see people living in a way that people don't live anymore. You know. Subsist, sub, I think I believe it's called subsistence living. Wicked Tuna. I've never actually gone fishing before and the show kind of solidifies why I really have no desire to. Unlike the show, The Last Alaskans or Life Below Zero, the people on Wicked Tuna don't really seem to have any respect for the animals that they kill. I mean, taking pictures with dead animals there's something just so gross about that. And yes, I'm talking to you, every single white person on Tinder, like ever. Stop it, cut it out. <laughs> None of us chicks like it. RuPaul, the RuPaul franchise. I would put all of it and specifically all stars in Sub-Zero. It's Sub-Zero. I thoroughly enjoyed this show when I was in college. It gave me confidence when I had none. I still don't really have any, but it was there for me, you know, when nobody else was. RuPaul, you deserve Sub-Zero. Life of Kylie. 
This is uncool. This is uncool. Because Kylie is about as interesting as watching paint dry. Um, you know, Kim says Courtney Kardashian is the least interesting to look at. Well, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. For me, it's definitely Kylie. Keeping up with the Kardashians, although, on the other hand, is Sub-Zero. It's such a heavy hitter of a show. I can't wait for the last season. I might cry. I don't know. <laughs> America's Got Talent. Seriously uncool. Seriously uncool. I hate that show. I have a gripe with the judges. They make $100,000 per episode only to say stupid shit like... <laughs> Really? <laughs> the entertainment industry is whack. The entertainment industry is so whack. What the heck? Project One Way. Lukewarm. I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that, but lukewarm. I watched the show growing up and to be honest with you, I don't really remember much of it. And so that's why it's that's why it's there. Yes, the circle on Netflix. I've only seen the American one on Netflix. It's cool. It's definitely cool. I've never laughed harder in a show. Sebum pretending that he had a period. That made my legs go weak. I died. That was so hilarious. Love is Blind. You know, it would be Sub-Zero, but there's only one season of it. So I can't, can't give it to that. I can't give it to them. So I'm putting it in cool. And there were so many just iconic moments in that show. Jessica feeding her golden retriever wine. What? Damon, not Damon, Diamond. I'm sorry, Diamond. Diamond quoting Beyonce as Carlton was saying, yo, wig is slipping. Oh, he did, he did not, he did not say that. He did not say that. When he said that, I, I nearly choked on my orange juice. That was that was insane. The Celebrity Apprentice. People hate me, but it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. I used to watch the show as a kid and that situation with Aubrey and Arsenio. Take your time. We're good. Aubrey had a great idea. She said, let me put my vagina on the back of your neck. When I had Aubrey on my shoulders, the one thing that kept going through my mind is don't drop her because they will swear you did it on purpose. And you know, there's a moment where I thought about something she said to me once and I was like, I could just, mm. but no, no, no. I got you, baby. I got you. Iconic. Iconic. Oh, and also, before we move on from this topic, Clay Aiken. Yes, the man who sang the seminal song. Call me your bridge over troubled water on American Idol. He, a sweetheart, a sweetheart. Love the dude. We have to protect him at all costs. Clay again, he's on the list. The Apprentice UK, however, I feel like, I don't know if this show's pop, I know it's popular in the UK, obviously, I don't know if Americans watch it, but it is Sub-Zero. And let me explain it for people who don't know. It's a spinoff of The Apprentice, but instead of celebrities, they take titans of business, their words, not mine. Um, and they all compete for, not for charity, but for an investment from the almighty Lord Sugar. Um, Lord Sugar, that's such a stupid name. It's so stupid. Um, but Lord Trigger is kind of funny. He's a character. I like him. And, uh, yeah, they can be for an investment from him and also mentorship because he's some, like, billionaire or whatever. Um, and I love this show because the contestants are really endearing. I think they're so endearing. And it's surprisingly hilarious. Alone. Hmm. I'm gonna put this show in cool. And it's because I love social experiments especially if they're death defying. And the reason why I'm not putting this in the sub-zero category is because it became a little predictable during some of the seasons as you knew the fattest guy was going to win the show. And you know, that's not really a test of whether or not you're a good hunter, survivor, 
um, a forager or whatever, it's just because you're fat and you have a lot of fat stored in your body so you can last the longest in the wild, you know? And that's not cool. But it's a good concept. It's a good show. Um, you can't really control how fat people are going on the show, you know, whatever. But, yeah. And so that's all I have to say. Top model, sub-zero. Absolutely sub-zero. Say what you want about Tyra Banks. She knows how to make a reality TV show. The Mole. Not that many people know about this show. I used to watch this when I was a kid. And I remember so much about it. And it's Sub-Zero. And I wish they would bring it back. And this was a show during the first two seasons. Guess who the host was? It was none other than the young Anderson Cooper. Ten strangers playing for up to one million dollars. Among them, a saboteur, a traitor, the mole. The winner, the one who answers the question, who is the mole? Yes, check out that early 2000s aesthetic that's currently raging itself back, much to my disappointment. I don't look good in low-rise jeans. I'm shaped like a fucking rectangle. How am I supposed to be cool if I can't dress cool? Totally joking, totally joking, but not really. Next show, Moment of Truth, seriously uncool. If I wanted to be a little devious, I would put it in Sub-Zero because it was kind of, it's like a car crash that you can't look, look, look away from, but I'm doing the right thing and putting it in seriously uncool. Um, and this show really shows you that human beings are disgusting people. And it's not just the contestants that go on the show who are disgusting. It's the audience members who I think are even more disgusting. Think of it as the modern day gladiator theater. Although if you're an audience member, you're not the one physically killing another human being. You're just sitting there watching and jeering and reveling in their downfall. It's really gross. It's really gross. Survivor, yes, Survivor, Sub-Zero. Didn't even have to think because it's so iconic. The concept is fantastic. It's one of those shows where I, I've been watching Survivor since I was eight years old as I think a lot of Survivor fans. And it's a show that I tune in every single week for for all of those years and it doesn't get bad. It's it's great. Some years the concept is a little a little shaky some of the years, you know, but all in all it's a, it's a really great show. Biggest loser. It's uncool. I think super uncool. No, I think it's just uncool. Um, when I watched the show as a kid, I used to think it was endearing because, you know, people are facing their demons, taking on challenges, taking life by the bulls, you know, changing their life. But they do, they don't, the Biggest Loser doesn't, they are not getting the Tasteful Award. They are not. It's, to be honest, the Biggest Loser is ghetto. I'm in the ghetto. It's it's ghetto, yeah. Because a huge part of the drama was seeing if people lost weight during the week. And if they didn't, it was this huge ordeal. Like the trainers were upset. So many confessionals of the contestants being disappointed, blah 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 blah, whatever. But it's like that don't make sense because they would have these challenges. The purple balloons hold four immunity cards. That's a one in six chance of victory. Playing the purple balloons means eating 1,000 calories. These sick ass challenges, like that was an actual challenge. Like make it make sense. It's stupid. That's stupid. Love Island. Ah, uh, uncool, seriously uncool. I did finish an entire season, so I guess it can't be seriously uncool. It's uncool, so it's uncool. And this show is, they just cast people who are more hot than they are interesting, period. The Voice, nope, sorry, Little Woman LA is next. Mm, uncool, for the same reason, they're short, so what? 
So what? That doesn't make for interesting television. It's uncool. The voice. I, I'm going to put this in seriously uncool. Judges are always surprised when contestants can sing and they're fugly. Like... Okay, passing judgment much. Dance Moms, didn't even think Sub-Zero, it's Sub-Zero. This was one of the last shows that I, I tuned in every single week for. Like I waited anxiously every single week to tune in so I could watch Dance Moms. I love the show. Yes, I might have had my elaborate plans to go to Pittsburgh and audition and become a member of Dance Moms. And you know, if, you know, I wasn't that good of a dancer, so. At the very least, I just wanted to be Chloe's best friend. But at last, you know, that was not my destiny. And I'm here, sitting home, working full-time job, <laughs> making YouTube videos. It's okay, We life goes on, life goes on. Mary Millions, I would say this show is cool. The show is cool, I like the show. Controversial, I know, I like the show. I like money, I like self-destruction, I like Stupid men being stupid. And I like a little bit of opulence, you know? <laughs> it's good. Oh, yes, and, and um, Jen Teal Chung from season one. Love that woman. I love that woman. You deserve so much. You deserve so much in your life. Rhythm and flow. Yes, this is, this is cool. This is cool. It's like Songland where it focuses on the talent. Um, and we need more shows about rapping. I would say we need more shows about rapping. Indian Matchmakers. I would put this show as cool. This show is cool. It's, it's a really interesting look at dating that most Westerners are not familiar with, and that's matchmaking. And yeah, I like it. Manor House, Sub-Zero, Sub-Zero. I had a whole, I have a whole video on this. And I will link that below where I talk all about it. But I love that show. 24 Hours in the Past. Um, this is a cool show. They need to bring it back and do a reboot. And you can actually watch full episodes, which I will link below as well. And it's a, um, it's a time traveling show. It's a historical reality TV. Really good. Another historical reality TV show that I really like is Victorian Bakers. I put this under the category cool as well. It's educational, it's interesting. It's about the glorious food called bread. What more can you ask for? It's really good. Victorian Slum House, another historical reality TV show, which I would put in Sub-Zero. I would put this in Sub-Zero, I think. Yeah, because it, it combines the drama of 24 hours of the past and it combines the educational aspect of Victorian Baker. So yeah, Sub-Zero. Splash. Did anyone else watch this growing up? Splash. I really like this. It's cool. I'm going to put in cool. And I will put in cool because I guess I just have a really boyish sense of humor. And I like physical humor, watching people belly flop. I don't know. I'm a simple human. <laughs> True Beauty. I believe the show was created by Tyra Banks as well. And this is definitely a really cool show and it's not the korean reboot i tried to find this on like youtube and find clips of it but i can't um it's the american one it takes place in las vegas where they get these super hot people who are really self-absorbed they go on the show and they think it's a beauty contest but it's actually a contest about the heart whether or not you're a good person interesting concept <clears throat> I feel like I've been talking too much. I need a glass of water. Moving on, moving forward, solitary. I would put this in sub-zero because it's a really good ass show. Someone was definitely tripping on shrooms when they thought of this idea. Um, for like some of the challenges of the show, let me insert a clip. Yeah, sitting on a bowling ball, that was an actual challenge. And it was glorious, glorious to watch. Beauty and the Geek. I would put this 
under uncool. It's uncool because it's just so predictable. Beauties will always be beauties, especially the ones they decided to cast. And geeks will always be geeks. I don't know why that's interesting. First dates. Uh, I would put this lukewarm. I would put this in lukewarm. They, the British show, it's a British show. And I, I remember watching a season where they had first dates, but in Chicago, the great city where I'm from. And that was more interesting to me than the British version. I don't know why, but it just was. Um, yeah, I don't know. You'd watch it like if it, it was on TV, you know, I'd watch it. But if it wasn't, you know, I wouldn't go out and seek it, I don't think. Mm, then the last show we have is American Ninja Warrior. I would put this... <sighs> cool, lukewarm. I, I think I'm going to do lukewarm because I really loved watching this show. But before Mount Midoriyama was conquered, you know, after Isaac Caldero conquered it in like 2016 or something like that, I really lost interest because it's like the unconquerable was conquered and now like what is there to watch? Anyway, that is my list and as Jeremy Clarkson would say, on that bombshell, it is time to end. Goodbye!